Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already then my name is Sarah and I am a flower farmer in East Yorkshire in the UK and I make lots of videos on my flower farm from how to grow flowers, how I'm cutting flowers, making bouquets and recently I've been getting into, probably in the last 18 months or so, I've been very passionate and learning lots about regenerative farming and one of the important things that I really want to get sorted this year is composting and I've had a couple of goes at making thermophilic compost piles um, none of them have been successful yet but I think I'm getting there um, I think it's really good to fail because then you learn from your mistakes and you are able to do it better the next time so um, I'm, I'm learning from my mistakes a lot at the moment so I've got a compost pile on the go that didn't get hot enough the second time I turned it. So I am on on the advice of Eddie from Rhizophilia. Um, he has been a really great mentor in the past few weeks. Um, I went on one of his courses um, in July, I think it was, and it was just amazing. I learned so much and he's been a really good um, support since then. So I've been asking him lots of questions and we've been doing Zoom calls and things whilst I get my eye in on the microscope and learning about making compost piles and things like that. Anyway, whilst I am working on the thermophilic compost piles, I also would like to put a Johnson Su bioreactor together. You might be wondering, what is a Johnson Su bioreactor? A Johnson Su bioreactor is the invention of Dr. David Johnson and his wife Hui Chin Su. This method of producing compost requires you to build a composting bioreactor which creates fungally dominant and microbially diverse compost. Over the years, modern agriculture has destroyed much of the diversity of fungi and microorganisms within our soils. The Johnson Su compost has been shown to include organisms that haven't been seen in soils for many years, which is why I'm really, really excited about being able to produce Johnson Su compost and hopefully reintroduce some of those organisms into my soils. The Johnson Su bioreactor is a static aerated method of producing compost and it takes up to a year for it to be finished and this long process ensures that the finished compost is fungally dominant. Once the compost is finished it has a clear like consistency and is microbially diverse like I've already mentioned. You can use Johnson Su compost as a seed dressing, you can use it as a mix in your potting soils and you can make a compost tea out of it as well. There's lots of things that you can do with the Johnson Sioux compost that will help to inject some biology into your soils. The great thing about it is that you only need a tiny amount to inoculate with the biology. In some cases you can use just one kilo to treat one hectare which is around four acres. I haven't included any instructions on how to make the Johnson Sioux bioreactor in this video and that is because there is a comprehensive guidebook on the Chico website which I will put down in the description and if you want to make the Johnson Sioux bioreactor I strongly recommend following the instructions as they are laid out in the guidebook and you will have the results that you are looking for. I have actually had a Johnson Sioux put together for the last sort of six months and I haven't had time to fill it but I tried to make this out of kind of second-hand materials that we just had lying around on the farm and it wasn't really good enough. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking that Johnson Sioux bioreactor apart, building a proper one and hopefully getting started with filling it and things so that we can have good compost this time next year or even spring 2024. Let's get into the making because I've got lots to do today. <laughs>
I just want to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes to help you develop your skills or learn something new. Skillshare has classes on almost anything you can imagine from graphic design, photography, fine art and business marketing. The class format means you, that you learn by doing and there are class projects which allow you to get feedback from your teacher. Probably don't know this about me but I have always been an artist and I love working in oil paints, coloured pencils and other mediums. However, the one thing that I've never been able to get the hang of is watercolour painting. So I just took a class with Helen Cousins called Botanical Illustration with Watercolour, a Trio of Pansies. And I managed to paint this pansy with watercolours. What do you think, guys? I think I need a bit more practice. Skillshare is ad-free, has multilingual subtitles and new classes are released every week. The first 1,000 of my viewers to join Skillshare using the link down in my description will receive a one month free trial. So the Johnson Sioux bioreactor is all put together now and we just need to fill it. So we, it's really hard to decide what materials to put in it because um, Dr. David Johnson recommends to put a third dairy manure, a third yard waste and a third of, I can't remember what the other third thing is, but um, basically we don't have those things. So what we're going to be doing is using uh, straw, uh, mulched up dahlias or shredded dahlias from my dahlia beds and grass clippings. And um, I might just mix in some wood chips with that as well. So because we are um, obviously on a farm, we have machinery available to us so Rob is just mucking out some of our yard uh, pens and we're going to be mixing it with the forklift and putting it into the bioreactor that way so hopefully it's less labour intensive and we can get that done quicker and easier than it would be by hand. So I've got all of my materials together to fill the Johnson Sioux. I'm um, just waiting for the forklift to be free so that we can mix it and put it into the bioreactor. So I've got all of the um, buckets of stuff behind me. When I put it into a compost carbon to nitrogen ratio calculator, it does have a high carbon to nitrogen ratio. So there's um, roughly about um, 80 or 90 parts carbon to one part nitrogen which is obviously kind of like triple what is recommended which is between sort of 25 and 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio but I'm hoping that and, and that's mainly because I added a couple of buckets of wood chips to it which I estimated to be about 400 to one um, but I'm hoping that because it's such a long process and the material stays in the Johnson Sioux for a, at least a year. I'm hoping that the fungi are going to start breaking down those wood chips. And even if everything else is broken down, I could maybe sieve the wood chips out and hopefully it's going to be good stuff to use. I might be making a massive mistake, but I'm hoping that because it's such a long process, it's going to have the time to break down and hopefully we'll get some good stuff at the end of it.
am absolutely pooped after doing that. I'm looking forward to heading inside shortly and having some tea and a drink. But um, it's all filled. I managed to calculate exactly the amount that I needed pretty much, which was quite good. So um, yeah, it's a matter of time will tell. I'm going to keep an eye on the temperature um, and then in four days I can remove the pipes that are in here and those should stay open because of the fungal activity, I hope. Um, and then hopefully within the next year or so we can just monitor it and see how it is degrading and becoming lovely Johnson Sioux compost. So it's been about 12, bit, bit over 12 hours since I filled the bioreactor and it is currently sitting just below 40 degrees. So what I'm hoping is that it is going to get above 60 degrees for four to five days. And then once it cools down below kind of 30 degrees, then I will add some worms and just allow the, the process to continue. So I'm hoping that it gets hot enough um, the one thing that I am concerned about is that the material got really, really wet um, yesterday because it was raining and um, we didn't pre-dry the material and then put it into the bioreactor, which is what um, Dr. David Johnson suggests. Um, we just put straight fresh material in there. So I'm quite concerned that it is going to compact down and go anaerobic, but at least I'm aware of that. And if it does happen, then I know what I've done wrong. We've just come to look at the Johnson Sioux and Rob's pulled one of the pipes Bio out reactor. there and it's holding open which is good so we could take the rest of the pipes out if we wanted to and that's going to keep the air inside the bioreactor to keep it aerobic and hopefully it'll help to keep the pile cooking. So the Johnson Sioux has been on the go for four days, five days now and it has been up to temperature and then it's come back down again and um, it's now currently just above 40 degrees i would have liked for it to stay above 60 60 65 for a little bit longer and um, but we got there for i think a day or two days and as you can see the volume has decreased quite a lot so i filled it right up to here and we've kind of lost uh, probably a quarter already so um, hopefully it um, will be okay. <laughs> I'm going to add the worms once we've gone down probably another 15, 20 degrees and um, they can start working their way down into the compost pile. So it's five days since I put the Johnson Sioux bioreactor together and now it is down to about 35 degrees. I was hoping by the end of the video I would be able to put the worms in but it's just not cool enough just yet. So I just wanted to talk about the things that I might do different next time which would probably be to put this weed membrane on a bit better because it has obviously the material has sagged right down and it's pulled the the weed membrane off the cage but at the same time if I cut that piece off the back there it might just fold over the top and provide a nice little protection against the the rain um, over the winter so I'll be putting the worms in probably tomorrow or the day after and just leaving it and I will be testing the moisture level in the Johnson Sioux bioreactor as well and putting some water in if it needs it so you to do the test for moisture you just grab a handful squeeze it between your fingers and if you can squeeze a couple of drops out then that's the perfect moisture level and um, that's a really key element to making sure that the compost matures properly so i hope you enjoyed this video guys if you've got any questions about the johnson sioux bioreactor then please let me know and i'd love to know whether you are encouraged to build your own i will definitely be making a couple more of these and testing out different ingredients i actually have a another kind of bioreactor here but it's not the right dimensions but I'll probably be putting some things into that and seeing how it goes and seeing what materials make the best Johnson Sioux and actually what is a good thing to do is make a few different bioreactors bio and have different materials in each and then you get different microorganisms within all of those and it's good to mix that compost up and use it on the farm on your garden and things like that so yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again on the next one.